Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay the frustration that we have in our Christian experience is proof that something about the ways of God is not understood. And you see, there are alternatives now. This is what makes it dangerous. There are alternatives now, alternatives that seem to resonate to the frustrations of the average Christian. And if we do not do anything about it, a time will come. Let me tell you, our pews will not only be empty, but history will judge us for not handling this baton well and passing it well. I came tonight to open your eyes to a very deep mystery, to open your eyes to something that is going on that we are not seeing. The ideology of the kingdom. The average believer knows nothing about kingdom. The average believer knows nothing about kingdom advance. It's unfortunate that sometimes even we great men and women of God that love Jesus with all our hearts, we have all kinds of ideas, but the accurate understanding of the strategy allocated for kingdom advance and the strategy that captures a generation for Christ is not known we have all kinds of ideas on how it will happen we talk a lot about revival and i believe it i'm a student of revival and i have been used by god here and there to plant those seeds of revival it's an honor he's granted me but i submit to you we don't know what we are saying it is true it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true our results show it we don't know it we have to submit ourselves to the rabbi of the ages we have to in to ask the holy spirit not to come and join us but to lead us because we something is wrong with our understanding spirit of the living god we are not asking you to come and join us in our confusion but to come to clear the air because there is an army that must rise with understanding are we blessed let's talk a bit about kingdom advance is that all right and then we'll pray what does it mean to advance the kingdom the bible says that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and we his christ and he says that we shall reign forever and ever and so what what we have to understand the concept of kingdom advance please write if you're writing let's just do a little bible study king and every scriptural method any and every scriptural method deployed any and every scriptural method deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities I believe there will be provision to get the tapes. Any and every scriptural strategy deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. This is what we call kingdom advance. Kingdom advance is not about preaching. It's not about singing. It's not about doing business. We are at liberty within the coordinates of scripture to invent through creativity any strategy at all that can lead to the enthroning of the christ across the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities listen to me whoever is not doing this today on earth is wasting god's time the deploying the coordinate scripture is our boundary as believers so we are we are given the liberty to walk within the coordinates of scripture and through the ministry of the holy spirit our partnership with him to come up with the various ways are we together now that we can 
deploy a mind control system that culminates to enthroning Christ first in the hearts of men you call it salvation you call it new birth but then across every strata of human activity so when the comedian our dear brother was talking and when the other one was talking and when the woman of God was worshiping in God's mind it is the same he is not interested in the unique method he is interested in the motivation and the power that sponsors it now if you do not understand this we will lose a generation the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy scriptural provided is within the coordinates of the word to institutionalize God in the hearts of men and to spread his influence across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance if that can happen through a church service then the church service is advancing God's kingdom. If that can happen through giving birth, then giving birth has now become a ministry. If that can happen through singing, then the singing has become a kingdom advancement strategy. If that happens through business, then the business. So it is not what we do that there is a central motivation that behind everything I do, behind the creativity and the excellence and the skill, all of the labor is geared towards one goal, to see that Christ and his purposes, are we together now, are first planted in the hearts of men and then the influence spreads across what you call the seven mountains. Please listen to me very carefully. We must educate a generation to know why we do what we do. Not just that we do it. Kingdom advance. Every church worker should know this. So while you are ushering people in and someone says, I'm not interested again, your insistence to have him come is not just to gain more membership for a church. You are motivated by a higher desire that this man may lose an opportunity to understand something about the kingdom. That becomes your basis of doing what you do very well. When you prepare and you excel as you minister, you are not just motivated by a desire to be famous. That will come, but the agenda is bigger than fame. It's too small a reason for God to invest such grace on you. Now listen very carefully. The Bible talks about two women in scripture. Called, one called Hannah and the other called Penina. Are we together now? The Bible says that Hannah could not have a child. Yes. Penina had children and Penina continued to communicate what looked like mockery over Hannah. Notice that Hannah continued to go to God and cry for help. But her prayer was not answered because there was no kingdom in it. God could not find a space in her desire where Christ will be glorified and his purposes. Now Hannah, paraphrasing now, went back this time around and said, Lord, I know what you are looking for. You, a body, you need bodies that represent your purposes. Can my womb have the honor of bringing one of the bodies? She prayed once, only once. Listen, I have learned from scripture and by experience that the key to getting God's attention is not rolling on the ground. It is the degree to which your life aligns to kingdom come. More than fasting, more than prayer, more than Bible study, the key that causes God to invest his jealousy upon a man and stay there until you rise is the degree to which his kingdom can come through you. Listen very carefully. I have seen that it is not difficult for God to lift the people. It is not difficult for God to lift an individual. The only issue is what there is nothing kingdom that is represented in our desires. 
it is within his power to make rich it is within his power to grant a man influence it is within his power to cause a nation and a generation to hear you but to what degree will his purposes be represented in your pursuit the difficulty in our Christian experience is, is, is a misrepresentation of God's potential. It looks like God is slack. It looks like God is slow. But the key is that God is vetting the purity of our desires until he finds himself there. You are not going to get his attention. You may cry. God is touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but he's only moved when he finds himself in your agenda. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. For your glory, I will do anything. Just to see you, to behold you as my King. Wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Wanna be where. Surrendering your heart is not the key to salvation. Believing the gospel and receiving his life is the key to salvation. But surrendering your life is the key to be used by God. Please understand this. The condition to be saved is not to give your heart to the Lord. It is to receive his life but when it has to do with doing business with God within the context of a generation the price is death I have said it again and again that the price for all of God is all of you until all of you not your money leave your money leave your car leave your skill leave your talent no until you die it's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2 20 I have been crucified with Christ. It's a mystery. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And this life today that I live in the body, I live by the faith. I am motivated by another reality. I have lost touch of my ambitions and my desires. I have brought everything under like a woman submitting to her husband. I have become a bride and a bride indeed. His desire has become my obsession i do not seek anything for myself my desire is for him to be glorified john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray and he made a statement that was very interesting he says father the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son that's the formula that's the formula that if I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. And because they cannot see me, they will see you who is the object of the sacrifice. But when they come to you, you are smart enough like an usher to redirect them. Are we together now? Pastor and his wife acted my message so beautifully here when pastor ushered his wife gave her an opportunity to share a few things and she turned back and beautifully honored him i said this woman understands kingdom because you see in theology we call it the reflection principle nobody can glorify himself your glory is invested in another and the excellence of what comes out of you is how you are glorified are we together now so the father cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the son the son cannot glorify himself his glory comes from the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify itself the glory of the church comes from his dominion over principalities and powers and creation it's a principle of shared dominion 
it is the son that glorifies the father it is the church that glorifies the ecclesia that glorifies the son and it is the dominion of the church over creation that is where the glory of the church is so it is important for us to understand that this call to the faith life that we call Christianity is not a journey unto pain and frustration in hope that we'll hear the sound of a trumpet one day. That is, that is a very well-meaning but destructive ideology. It is the kind of ideology that has produced the social economy that we see in Africa. It is the kind of ideology that has been responsible for the prevailing power of darkness. Are we together? Very, very important. And so we must understand, therefore, that we are not fully carrying out what we call the Great Commission just because men are getting saved. That is one side of the victory, but is being cancelled out by the loss of the darkness that looms over a territory. There are two keys to kingdom advancement. Write them down, please. Number one is called evangelism. Number two is called influence. There are two biblical keys that make for kingdom advance. Number one is called evangelism. Number two is called influence micah chapter 4 please evangelism is very important we know that we have been greatly mentored we know how to stretch ourselves from border to border but here is the other dimension it says but in the last days kapu shale kapu siata, the mountain so the house of the lord is a mountain on its own and the bible says it shall be established at the top of other mountains and it shall be exalted above all the hills look at all look at the way this scripture messes with your intelligence do you flow to a mountain can a mountain be placed on other mountains hmm. verse 2 and how many nations many nations shall come when you want to understand this you must study solomon solomon was a man who demonstrated the power of the influence of the kingdom on the excellency of the understanding hearts that he carried solomon compelled the attention of all the kings that were within his sphere but there was a strange woman from ethiopia who would not come because gentiles don't come they come to your light but kings don't come to your light they keep watching they have light too they have results kings come only to the brightness of your rising please follow me we have something we have a serious journey to take tonight Sheba continued to hear of the hand of God upon Solomon but it was not compelling enough for her to come she kept watching the same way they are watching you and a time came when Sheba herself had to come and she came with her plenty and the Bible tells us theologically speaking for over six months she continued to tour the palace of Solomon and at the end of it the Bible says she said half of this was not told me she had no breath in her every generation will not be confused there is a generation that will get this thing yes sir I'm going to show you that generation because whoever that generation is we know that they are a chosen people they are a kingdom of priests a peculiar people a holy nation the Bible says that generation you will know that generation by the signature of a body of knowledge they will access called marvelous light you know that this is a generation signified by prophecy by the depth and the degree of spiritual illumination that they have access to the bible calls it marvelous light are we together if we are together please say amen, amen. yes so here we see that 
kingdom advance is more than just evangelism we will need influence let me talk a bit about influence and i begin to tie some things what is influence influence is the ability to cause a person and a territory to buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty it's called influence the ability to compel men to compel systems to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence that means if i sustain an ability to work on your understanding and i compel you to buy into my beliefs to buy into my convictions without jeopardizing your power to choose it is called influence it is a key to kingdom advance it is the key that compels territories to call upon the name of the lord we have done well in evangelism but we must understand the principles that make for influence otherwise a generation will come where god will mean anything are we blessed influence the degree to which i make you believe the degree to which i make you buy into my convictions now listen to me the world operates on mind control systems please write it down mind control systems the world the cosmos operates on mind control systems that means at every given point within a territory there are shapers of a territory's understanding everything about kenya and everything about africa is a proposition that came from someone and was received are we together now watch this satan comes i mean the bible says that god comes in the cool of the day are we together and he says adam where are thou and adam said i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked the next question who told you you have accessed another source of information someone has mediated between me and you we call it media now listen very carefully a system of mediation has come between me and you to communicate something that did not come from me who told you what is the source of that information because clearly you are now under the influence of that information consistently we are immersed in all kinds of informations clamoring for our our connection our emotions now listen very carefully it is why advertisement is powerful business people will tell you they spend millions of dollars for a two three minutes advert what are they seeking to do it's a system a mind control system the end of it is to produce an addiction that may be greater than your own control when that happens you have come under the influence of whatever information it is are we together now yeah somebody told you that corruption is profitable you believed it generally i'm speaking not just to you i'm speaking apostolically you received it you taught the children and now it has become an institution someone else taught that being serious with god is equivalent to failing in life you believed it you received it and it's now become the frame of your belief system listen to me the bible says receiving the end of your faith first peter chapter 1 and verse 9 even the salvation of your soul the end the culmination of your faith is not just the salvation of your spirit the reality that has happened to your spirit man must flow over to the realm of your mind there must be a correction here's how the bible puts it philippians chapter 2 paul is speaking to the church in philippi and he starts from verse 5 he says permit this mind to be in you the word let there means permit to permit this mind there was a frame of understanding that made the holy spirit comfortable on jesus 
Remember that at age 12, when his colleagues were there playing around, a teenager should not be in the temple learning anything at age 12. But Jesus knew that although he was God, now he had come in the flesh. He needed to submit himself because his mind would play a role. And he submitted himself to learn the principles. And then for 18 years, we do not hear anything about Jesus again from age 12 scripture is silent the next time we see him he's 30 years coming to be baptized by jordan and then the heavens open the spirit of god descends upon him and the father says this is my beloved son question what was he before this is now my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he compels creation to hear him hear ye him and now Paul is teaching us that Jesus was not just Jesus because he was the son of God that he was able to work on his belief systems to sustain an understanding that made him the logos in experience that the father was comfortable to walk through him because his mindset never fought one agenda of God on earth and Paul is saying, permit this mind to be in you, which was also, there was a mental disposition that Jesus possessed that allowed the Holy Spirit to be comfortable. Listen, impartations are useless when the belief system has not changed. We love impartation, Africa, and impartation is very important. But impartation, you see, the oil will always take the shape of the vessel if the vessel is small it will make the oil look small when the prophet was sp speaking with the woman and she said there is nothing except the oil was hearing the conversation and say you call me small no you limited me in a small vessel and the prophet said go and borrow vessels i know what the problem is don't borrow oil but borrow vessels expand when you expand now the oil will begin to look like the shape and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped listen to me two people can carry the same anointing but their mindsets for instance and respectfully so church history in africa would tell you many anointings that we carry today did not start from us they were anointings that came with our fathers and the patriarchs of faith but either because the men were not educated or they did not have the requisite level of spiritual enlightenment that will allow that dimension of god find expression the anointings on them that we now carry and look great it was always on them but their mindset made it small their mindset made it to look ineffective now God walked on us and expanded our understanding and the same grace now is on us and watch the potential of that anointing mind control systems a territory can be under siege mindsets and strongholds a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern a mindset is a perspective a mindset is a viewpoint this is very important our beliefs in africa need to be edited from the lens of scripture not the lens of westernization not the lens uh -uh, uh -uh. the coordinates of growth is scripture for a believer and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation the boundary of our growth is limited to scripture because there is a way that cement right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death so we cannot randomly open up ourselves to just any information no truth does not just bless until it is sequentially arranged truth is like a house you don't put zinc after a foundation and call it house although zinc is required the pattern of building is important there is listen I, I, am i am i uh... now watch this watch this watch this please let me have two gentlemen any two not the ministers not yes any two of you please come let's celebrate them please come stand you stand here you stand here watch this now this brother 
is born again and is under the influence and the mentorship of Pastor A. Everybody please look up. And this brother is born again and under the mentorship and influence of Pastor B. Are we together now? Now, this man is properly mentored and taught the ways of the kingdom and his Christian experience comes as a report card that he's been properly trained. This one is randomly trained in truth but not truth that is coordinated and his Christian experience is full of gaps and situations that defy explanation. Now listen very very carefully. There is something you should know about God before you are taught prosperity. If you are not taught that and you are taught prosperity, it will destroy you. Sit down. There is something about God you must know. It is not just any truth. The truths have a sequence to build you well. So if I get born again and my first message... Are we together? This is what has been happening in Africa. Just because it is truth does not mean it is a blessing. Uh -uh. That's why you must be guided. The Holy Ghost comes to guide us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Truth has killed many people. They held on to it and it killed them. This man has not been taught the reality of the victory of Christ. He's not been taught the attacks that influence brings. He's not been taught that the cosmos has an adversary. He's not been taught that every open door has an adversary. He's not been trained. Teaching him about growth and influence will kill him. He does not have the spiritual stamina to survive this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This man is now learning about prosperity but he has not been taught death to the flesh he's not been taught the lordship of christ and so his first one million dollars the man is confused why because the old man is still alive he's not been cultured to see that everything god gives you you are a steward he's not been taught that in this kingdom owners are rebels we don't own things in this kingdom mm -mm. Oh my god. sit down Sit down, please. Ownership is proof of rebellion. In this kingdom, we are stewards. We don't own things. And moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So if God trusts me with $10 million, $100 million, the revelation of stewardship has fortified me from lust. Listen to me. This is an apostolic conference and there are many things that we need to bring under divine order. That was the goal of writing the first and second Corinthians. That all things be done decently and in order. Are we together now? Yes. So imagine respectfully that this man now becomes a pastor of a church. Look at the, the depth of deficiency that this man has. Now remember... Please, I'm not, I hope you understand the standpoint from which I'm coming. I'm sent to the body and I love the body. The goal is never to tear down. No, I don't destroy the body. You will never hear me say any, it is the body that I am part of. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not just signs and wonders. It is the ability to capture the speakings of the spirit within a season and to articulate it to a generation so that when men understand they will be able to run the speakings of god through his holy apostles and prophets are like ladders they are like a compass that can bring men back to the boundaries of his grace and power and wisdom this is what we are doing so this man is confused about so many things he's not sure of but now he finds himself as a pastor and he has to teach from the lens of his belief system. Now, watch what will happen to the members because the members will be a reproduction of his mistakes and the mistakes will continue to multiply. So you can literally, without blinking your eye, just look and see the imbalances scattered all over Africa, which are a product of the lack of the sequential arrangement of truth. 
Now, you don't have to be fake to be in error. You don't have to be fake to be wrong. You just have to be imbalanced. Come, he says, and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city that was equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. No exaggeration. That's the lamb's wife. Anything that is outside of that coordinate is not the lamb's wife. It is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers right like carpenters to mature the saints so that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry if we do not correct this there is going to be trouble now remember respectfully speaking this guy suffered in his upbringing so don't blame him he's gone through hardship the first of ten children suffered labored himself why should he not believe in prosperity why should he not there is nothing wrong with it except that his emotional connection to his past and his pain has created a belief system that if not deconstructed and rearranged will be the emphasis of his teaching in ministry Are we together? Yes. It is not enough to have truth. They must be arranged sequentially. Then everything that comes from God to us becomes profitable both to us. There are people, the worst thing that happened to them is that they became anointed. Because the background trainings and equippings that should sustain them and sustain the oil was not there. And so when they were anointed, it made them arrogant and impatient. They would not honor people like our fathers like this and say we are all anointed. It's not their fault. They are not fake. They are not wrong. It's a deficiency of the balance, the patterns, a deviation from God's patterns. There are people who teach that when we come to church, we only come to see God. You are right, but you are wrong. God sought for a man and remained helpless until a man came. How dare you think all we come to see is just God? If you say that as describing God's sovereignty, you are right. But you say that as describing kingdom advance, God is helplessly in love with men. He's limited himself that much. Without a man, he remains handicapped as though he were not God. He chose it. So he says, what is man that thou art mindful of? Lord, you would, you, would, you would leave man because of his rebellion and turn back from heaven like a man pursuing a woman, seeking her hand in marriage. God is not ashamed to show his vulnerability towards man. He will still come back. I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. The most important thing is God, not men. You are wrong. You are right, but you are wrong. You can sit on a wheelchair for long, although there are men, but one man will come into that building and without raising any song, people are standing from the wheelchair. What was the difference? Remember, God was there. You invited him right from the beginning of the service. So what changed? Not God, a man. From the beginning of the service, we say, Lord, you are welcome. This is your service. And yet burdens are still hanging on people. As if Satan did not hear what was being said. And suddenly a man holds the mic. And in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, what was an age-long captivity leaves. That was not just God. That was man. The Holy Ghost had to look for a woman to agree for Jesus to come. He would have remained in heaven there a woman said be it unto me i allow i allow that the christ would find expression listen to me i would always give this example god was done with saul pastor david was the next person 
but a man stood in between called Samuel and refused and because one man refused David remained in the wilderness it was not the will of God it was the will of man Samuel refused to go and anoint David David kept seeing visions of the throne and remained in the wilderness there God had agreed but man refused and God had to come to the man and say please how long will you weep seeing that I've rejected Saul as king can you take your horn God I thought God would say ah, there are many men on earth <clears throat> you are the only one who behaves like that wow. God does not reject men he is unashamed about the value of men please don't feel insulted I love you with all my heart I stretch you for a reason please sit down it is the reason why we didn't get jobs what is there he's a CEO so what ask Vashti she made that mistake and forgot she was only queen because she married a man who had influence over 127 provinces there are men in this earth that you cannot cast God must make them to fall in love with you for you to pass not everybody is castable i teach you the intelligence of living in the cosmos when a man's ways pleases the lord is it in your bible he makes there are some enemies you cannot cast they must be at peace with you they are gatekeepers this is where many believers continue to act foolishly in the system he says to be wise as serpents he's teaching you how to live in the cosmos and he's saying don't be like the serpent but there is something about the intelligence of the serpent that will be needed for your journey study hmm. are we together so for us to be able to communicate the dimension of influence that will enthrone christ in kenya and africa listen to me it will take more than desire it will take more than um just church services rejoicing it will take conferences like this that communicate all of the dimensions the apostolic intelligence that must come to the saints i submit to you pastor many believers are ignorant about the cosmos we do not understand the cosmos we know god but we do not know men and we do not understand his systems psalm 82 and verse 5 thank you sir thank you sir psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and the bible says all the foundations of the earth are out of course he's speaking about god's people verse 6 i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in verse 7 but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes although it is in your destiny to walk in the God class but you're not sustaining the intelligence of dealing in the cosmos will cost you and bring you down to become like mere men there are believers who have rejected prosperity because they did not understand it or because of the imbalances around it and they have rejected it as though it's not important and they are paying for it right now there are churches paying for it there are individuals paying for it there are people today who cannot get jobs because they do not understand the cosmos and the system that will help believers to make progress on that wise please listen to me believers if we must see the glory and the power and the grace of god find expression within our territory it is important to not only know god we must understand his ways everybody say his ways the bible says he made known his ways to moses his acts yes hallelujah africa it's like someone in ICU right now and there needs to be men and women who will rise with a passion for God and sufficient spiritual understanding of not just God but his ways so that we will be able to initiate the transformation 
um, that not only benefits Christians but benefits every territory if all we bring benefits Christians alone then we are not a blessing I hope you know that because he sends his reign to the godly and even the ungodly there must be a dimension of that which we do that will bless all and sundry this has been my contemplation for many years that something is wrong with our theology something is wrong with our communication and Sunday after Sunday Wednesday after Wednesday and in many circles almost every day we continue to advocate this error is becoming institutional and there is need for a retreat fast there is need for a reorientation an understanding so that our children will know the God that we so love and call upon Otherwise, there will be a serious problem within the years that come. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Let me just touch on an aspect and then we will pray. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven jesus is talking about something called the keys of the kingdom please look up the keys of the kingdom a key stands for access are we together now and he's saying i would grant you access in fact the bible puts it in chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was speaking in one of his training sessions and he says because it has been given to you everybody say it has been given to me one more time say it has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom the word know there is the same word that is used like a man knowing his wife it does not just mean awareness it's an intercourse with these mysteries the mysteries of heaven he says these are the secrets by which the saints reign in light they are called the mysteries It's a body of truth allocated that when the saints find it the result is dominion the result is influence when you find this body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints then you will arise like isaiah chapter 60 and shine for your light is come amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light arise shine arise shine why because your light is come not because your light is there believers hear me we are talking about commanding the kind of influence and dominion that enthrones christ we are talking about a day when the only songs that will be able to hear on our streets are songs that glorify jesus and it would not happen by fighting it will happen by influence you cannot I was told a little about um, the, the comedian that came here and I was honored and I mean the followership and all of that and for this man to name the name of Christ this is influence now imagine with me if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus is Lord even by mistake there would be more harvest from that mistake than many many crusades put together listen to what i tell you this is a very serious discussion i hope you know that mind control systems are not only information they are men because at every point every territory has the gatekeepers every industry has gatekeepers and they have submitted their understanding to these men it's not something we, whether you like it or not is a reality there is a way one man can dress and make one million people follow in 21 in 24 hours 
there is a way one woman can speak and cause people to speak that way you can introduce a slang and in 24 hours it's gone viral people are that helpless and if we understand this we will also know how easy it is to enthrone Christ listen our messages will not be heard in this generation until we put a crown on it it is only what carries dominion that speaks to this generation so as powerful as our message is nobody will listen to you having two people alone talking to you following you people want to see a dimension of results they want to see a dimension of the life and the power of god like i taught in the morning they want to see an evidence and they will follow you the bible says in micah chapter 4 and verse 2 that all nations will say come let us go to the mount of the lord we is listen we have to be tired of begging people to come a time will come when they will run and come to us come let us go it's an advice come let us go the bible says it beautifully in, in, in verse 3 of chapter 60 isaiah it says gentiles shall come to your light not to you and their kings to the brightness of your rising it says that your gates will continually be open it will not be shut day or night to receive the forces of the gentiles listen let me tell you a generation is coming that it will be an honor for kings to hold us it, it will not be us loitering around houses of parliament trying to look for a say there is a dimension of kingdom power and wisdom that will submit it will cause territories to submit to the name of the lord I know it will happen in my lifetime yes sir. yes sir I know it will happen we will wear the devil out and let him know when Jesus said it is finished he meant it mm. a day will come when if you don't sell Christian music you will go down listen and it has nothing to do with sentiments because that is the only music that can excel that is the only music. i mean it will be proven scientifically to be therapeutic and so it will now be recommended at a social platform not a religious platform as a health recommendation this is not just church this is kingdom Today, when you say you are a pastor, people just look at you. This is what they heard. I am a stupid, confused, wicked manipulator. So people just look for names and say, I'm just a worker in the house of God. When has being a pastor and a man of God become such an insult? My God, some people from this conference are changing it. That name, Ichabod, must depart from church. A day will come when if you stand for a job and you say I'm a Christian I saw you at Ruach conference yes you have the job because that automatically means that you have been submerged under a thorough system of kingdom mentorship you have become an advantage to that corporation this is kingdom please listen to me hmm. a time will come when once again visitors will come to our homes and our children will greet them not come and slap them because of what they watched on tv they can stand and say good morning sir and say where did you learn that he said that's all i have known i've been taught a day will come when christians will begin to introduce new courses in our school curriculum thank god for that which the government demands but we are also there is a government that we are running and there are things our children must learn huh. are we together yes a time will come when individuals and churches will build cities now I, I i mean this seriously cities we we'll tell the government we love you and we appreciate your effort but the bible calls us light it's not a proverb let's prove it 
give us space and within months we have created what looks like Christ where is a scripture that opens the gate to the estate it is not an estate for Christians but it's an estate that honors Christ and because the creativity came from him his signature must be there listen let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters what God is doing in Africa in the midst of the confusion in the midst of the decadence there is an emergence there is an emergence of men and women of power it is not an emergence of preachers it's an emergence of witnesses it's an emergence of ambassadors it's an emergence of promoters and defenders of the interests of Jesus now listen to me you have been taught the seven mountains there are no eight mountains they are literally are seven mountains they define the jurisdiction of the mind control systems every information and every influence on earth today comes from these systems the mountain of religion where the spiritual convictions of men and women are shaped something about God came from that mountain an error about God about Satan about life came from that mountain and God must have himself witnesses on that mountain men and women who will be able to stand to accurately communicate the things of God a time will come where people will come to church by 3 a.m. waiting for a service of 6 p.m. not just because of miracle signs and wonders but the opening of our mouth will be the liberation of destinies we are not, listen, we are not, we are not only going to teach like noisemakers who are teaching spiritual things. No, we will teach and people will log on in their offices because what we teach has socioeconomic value. The mountain of education, the shapers and the molders of mindsets. Right now, we have many teachers. You talk to your child and say, Daddy, that's wrong. Who told you? Auntie. Who is auntie? The one who has more time for me while you are around looking for money. The one who has replaced you in my life. Who has shaped my understanding. And if that auntie or that uncle does not subscribe to the government of Christ, your child is in trouble. He will ask you a question one day that you will not be able to sleep. Daddy, what is this? And you say, who, who taught you that? Say, I know more. I can tell. Just sit down and let's have a conversation. My auntie says it. My uncle says it. But how about a school where the teachers have vigil before resumption? How about a school where we pray for the students before we start? And they produce 100% in all of their exams. How about a professor who can prophesy? And have word of knowledge? listen this is not just an entertainment it will happen the mouth of the lord has spoken it the mountain of family life in the name of jesus our homes will not be in ruin let me tell you we are the generation that will preserve our children will serve the god of their parents no there is no child following another god no you will serve the god of your father the god of your mother a time will come your child will say daddy do you know the first expression of god was supposed to be seen in daddy and mommy because man and woman are two dimensions of god and marriage is the system that helps children to learn god at the most basic level a woman is a type of the dimension of god a man is a type of the dimension of god when a child grows without a father the effect is seen in society when a child grows without a mother the effect is seen in society we will change the statistics that they tell us about marriage we are coming hmm. how about media in five minutes you can hear something that will take one year to leave you that's how powerful it is five minutes and information is introduced to your Christian experience introduced to your financial understanding 
that becomes a ladder upon which darkness rides in we need some sanity but when we are poor and broke we'll be at the mercy of any system in the name of jesus hear me a day will come like our dear brother said we are not only going to have television station we will have satellites son of man what seest thou a flying scroll the power of technology in advancing the gospel the prophet saw satellite but he could not call it so he called it a scroll that flies carrying a message across the horizon it will happen by the spirit of the living god the mountain of politics and governance imagine the rigorous training of daniel only for him to be a politician Daniel's training you would think he was going to become an apostle imagine the training of Esther the book of Esther is the power of government there was no prophet in the book of Esther there was no man in the book of Esther the only defender of God was a woman in the place of politics her man had signed the death sentence of God's people and a woman used her influence honored her way to the throne and changed the policy are we blessed yes sir these are real mountains the mountain of arts and entertainment were you not taught that when you win you you break you bust champagne and pour it on your head you watch someone do it and because the person is not a failure you can't say he failed listen to me we are going to redefine how to celebrate success when the world becomes successful they honor champagnes and the rest but we will be so successful and tell the world look on us and when they look at us we say this is how we celebrate success in the kingdom and they say what does this mean it is a position of victory no but i thought you are the doer no a man can receive nothing except it is given to him we will mentor nations to know that god is the one who deserves the praise from any life this is true and this we will do and the one mountain that controls them the mountain of business the mountain of finance the mountain supervised by satan himself tyre and sidon were the business hubs of the den world and satan himself called the king of tyre he sits on that mountain himself the greatest attack in your life will not come just in your spiritual life the first temptation will come over the issue of your belly when you overcome it the next will come over your spiritual life fall down from that holy mountain and the third temptation is where satan himself will say the systems have been given to me listen to me let me tell you this babylon is raging attempting to ensure that you cannot prosper calling the name of the Lord Darius the king built 90 feet gold and said at the sound of music everybody bow to that gold and four Hebrew boys said well we honor you and we respect you three Hebrew boys but we will not bow the challenge is that the cosmos prospers you at the expense of the prosperity of your soul now here comes a generation saying we will not bow but we will still stand strong and the devil is saying by what technology and we tell them there is a wisdom that comes from above we will invade the systems and still be billionaires and be disconnected from the money it's a mystery that men and women will stand up and say sir as far as it is kingdom we are ready to invest this much we have the power the bible says the rich will rule over the poor not the rich christian the rich anything will rule over the poor anyone and a borrower will always be slave to the lender so the way satan makes you a slave is to make you a borrower listen to me very carefully let me show you one scripture we are soon going to pray please be patient with me we're rounding up genesis chapter 42 don't forget this scripture for as long as you live from verse 1 and 2 i was blessed when i was told about the economic sessions that you know the session that was going on that pastor i was so honored and blessed 
Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn, where? Now, it is dangerous when it is only Egypt that has corn. Because the increase is the, of the earth is for all. Even the king is fed by it. But in this case, only Egypt had corn. And Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy from us from there that we may live and not die. Even a prophet dies when there is no corn. Listen to me. It is always hunger that takes God's people to Egypt. There is only one reason why the saints will keep going to Egypt. Hunger. The search for bread will take God's covenant people to Egypt where they, they remain slaves there. There was only one reason. Egypt did not say, church, come. Egypt only made sure there was bread there. And even Jacob released his sons. Please go to Egypt and buy bread so that we will eat and not die. When it is Egypt that feeds you, you will serve their God. Is God speaking to us? And that in this season, God wants to raise people mighty men men who love God listen when we talk about prosperity please understand this from a kingdom standpoint we're not talking about men who just um, just for self glorification the agenda is bigger than that these are weapons they are weapons that will cause creation to submit to the name of the Christ there is a level of economic empowerment you must have to find yourself in the corridors of power there are certain people who must be empowered for the kings to hear the counsel of god do you know that one king being saved has saved an industry so every effort to reach that king god is in it please listen to what i tell you we are going to pray Many people are rising. Not everybody is lazy. And God in this season is... Let me tell you this. You know, we talk about billionaires and millionaires. We've not seen wealthy people yet. You watch what God... God, there are men who are in the cave of Adulam right now. They don't even know they will be financial apostles. They think they will be men of God. Because the training God is taking them through is not the training of, a, of, of someone who will be wealthy. He has not taught them anything about business yet. But their destiny is finance. God is thoroughly purging the flesh. He's thoroughly purging the desire for mundane things. And afterwards, he will invest a dimension of wealth that can change a nation in a day. There is a statement God is about to make with African in Africa. And I am glad that it's happening in our lifetime. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you sincerely. Don't let any man who does not name the name of Christ bully you. There is a strategy that God already put in place. The name of the strategy is called the church. The church is not a place of worship. It's a mystery strategy to be revealed in this time. And so God desires. God desires that we come into that understanding is more than just saving someone just from going to hell that is important we will continue to evangelize we will continue to see that people submit to the lordship of the christ but hear me kenya hear me africa god is calling on men and women who will insist until they ascend the mountains that will provide for excellence that they will command a dimension of influence influence the power of the Holy Ghost being upon you you will become a leader in your field then you rewrite the rules like Esther do not be part of the few ignorant people that continue to think that the church's interest to be represented in every socioeconomic space is just carnal is the desire of a man of God to get no 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 it is a strategy to protect the name of Christ when Daniel began to pray 
the prayer life of Daniel was affecting the powers that be of the Medes and the Persians and he used people in the parliament are we together now to put a policy that for 30 days men do not pray we can only preach in the crusades when the policies favor us we need men who sit down there and can defend the name of the Christ and let me tell you I know that some of you are there I know that some of you have seen this in your dreams let me tell you in this conference and in the name of Jesus the son of the living God the grace that must insist that you are at the top for the sake of his majesty that grace must come upon you I made up my mind that I will never pastor people who are only spiritual we must raise men and women of influence we must raise men who have strategic voices influence is important every rule is relative it's relative to the powers that set it we will vet these rules from the lens of God's interest and if his interest is not represented we will create a system that will change it until the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ it's been prophesied already and it will happen in the name of Jesus that the next time God grants us the grace to come to Kenya we'll hear that there are 15 new TV stations not just church stations stations well funded to international standards by young people in their 20s 30s 40s A day will come, people will knock your door and say, sir, we need help. And you tell them, sorry, I'm praying. They say, what is that? He said, that is the name of the spiritual experience that connects me to the wisdom that you are being blessed by. Don't interrupt me. You are free to join me or wait for me. The ashamedness over God will end because we will have results that compel men to honor God. let me tell you this pastor and I encourage every man of God here I am not one of those men of God that will say I do not love politicians I do not love these people <laughs> when I find men of influence and their hearts are open towards me I am friends to many people I have my convictions and I have my values but it, when we mentor kings we mentor the land Please listen to this. A day will come by the grace of God where the kings within this territory are under the influence of the servants of God represented here. That you will be able to give them the counsel of God and say this is the direction the Lord leads and they will follow and follow through with the nation to prosperity. I am friends to many politicians. I am friends to many noble men. I honor them. I love them. But it's a privilege to be associated with them because they need help. Listen to me. Do not reject influence. It is not only wrong, it is sin. If you reject influence, it's proof that you do not love the purposes of God. We must embrace the influence that makes for prosperity, that makes for excellence. We must make up your mind that everything that matters in Kenya will have the voice of God represented whether it is your media stations whether it is the music people are we together now yes that nobody will come and shut any facility that is supposed to be for the purposes of the kingdom and I pray that you join in the campaign to crush poverty out of Kenya and out of Africa it is a noble campaign it is not a campaign of weak people who love the things of the world it is the men and listen the the weight of god is heavy it takes resources to carry it please rise up on your feet That the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. I have seen many visions about Africa. 
I have seen by the Spirit the moves of God that is coming to Africa. That rejected stone. The Lord has revealed to me again and again. The labors of many people who have given their lives for the gospel in Africa will not be in vain. A generation is rising by the Spirit. Men and women like prophet joel saw it will no longer just be crusades and evangelistic meetings alone it will be the seven mountains well represented please hold hands with someone we are going to pray our time is gone apologize tonight because of time I may not be able to pray for the sick and to just prophesy and do an impartation don't miss the session tomorrow that I'll be ministering I will share with you somewhere there my encounter with the Lord Jesus and the instruction that he gave unto me and one of it pastor is that when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I was like a dead man on the ground he didn't speak to me but I was hearing everything he was saying. That was when I learned that in the realm of the spirit, you do not have to talk to speak. The language of God is light. And light at his brilliance left him and entered me. And when that light entered me, how I did not die is a mystery. No one would receive that kind of light and remain alive. And that was when a straight line was drawn from Genesis to Revelation. I started comprehending things that I never learned, never knew. Illumination of the Spirit. And in one of the encounters that I had again, the Lord told me, Son, everywhere I allow you to go, there will be people in that place who must receive the light that came from me to you. And I had, I saw an angel of the Lord who stood by me. And he told me that this angel will walk with you. He is called the angel of the Lord's presence. Please hear me. This is not just a conference with men of God who have come to bless you. It is a very defining moment in our lives. Very defining moment in our experience. And I have to respect time. Our time is gone. And many of us have to leave. So I may not be able to minister and pray and prophesy and minister to the sick. But please, whatever sacrifice that you will make to be at the final session, I want you to make that session. But when we pray, just one prayer point and I speak over your life and we're done tonight. Just one prayer point. Father, let your kingdom come through my life. Lift your voice and pray. Let your kingdom come through my life. Is someone praying? Parusha la pratusia. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all. Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all, pray. Above all, in my life, here and now, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. In my life, in my life, Lord, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, above all, 
Let me just add one more prayer point. Lord, show me the geography of my weakness. Please help your wife. I'm sensing an anointing on her. And the Lord is saying to prophesy to her, Madam, I speak to you by the Spirit. There is a prophetic grace that is coming on you, number one. And number two, the anointing that was upon Esther is coming upon your wife, Pastor. And the Lord is going to be granting her access to kings and captains of industry. This is the word of the Lord and it will happen by the Spirit. I'd like you to pray. Lord, show me where I occupy in these seven mountains. Open my eyes and grant me the grace. It's time to represent your interest. Is someone praying? We're done. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Over Kenya, over Africa, your kingdom reigns. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Lord, the kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. I, I really I really apologize my, my heart is burning and I feel so bad madam I don't know who you are this woman I don't know where you are coming from but please lift your hands I saw a horn coming upon you and I saw an anointing and the Lord says he's shifting you to a new dimension in life and a new dimension in ministry this is what I saw he said my heart shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed even with fresh oil these ladies two of you holding your hands I'm seeing an anointing like fire just left me and came on two of you this one lifting her hands alongside the one she's holding I'm seeing that grace is a very strong anointing and the Lord is saying he's opening you and opening your lives to new dimensions in the spirit new dimensions in the spirit it will not be like the old the Lord is saying he's bringing you into a new experience of power of grace of illumination father I pray over everyone there is a music artist here the power of God is coming upon you you are going to write songs your next album I'm seeing it by the spirit right now I'm seeing a strong anointing. Please help them. It's coming on a music artist. Someone you are in the music ministry. It's, I'm seeing an eagle. There is a grace for revelation. Parokato Satyata is coming on your songs. And God is giving it wings in the spirit. It will go across the shores of Africa. And bring glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just two people, please forgive me. The power of God is coming on them and they will run physically, running out now as I'm talking. Please hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Physically. There is a grace for speed. 
that I must release before tonight's meeting is over. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, Karitoshia. And he ran. Listen, help them please. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. The hand of the Lord is upon me tonight. And hear me. Many of you have been in one position for years. Many of you have been in one position for long. I come by the apostolic and the prophetic. I'm about to release the grace for speed. When I pray, some of you will begin to run physically. Please, whether you are an usher or not, hold them so they don't injure themselves. Right now, I stand in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, over Kenya. Kenya, hear me. I speak to you. Receive the grace for speed. Speed, speed, speed. No more delay. The king's business requires haste. I've got the sound and I declare over your hand. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.